this. This looks like physics. Thank goodness Dr. Romano will be nowhere around. Hi, Hi guys. How's it going? This is going to be the first of the physics tapes that I'm going to be making. Even though I'm known for organic chemistry um, and advanced organic chemistry, I've taught physics for a very long period of time. I'm not even going to say how many, because you'll think I'm an old geezer. But what I want to do in this intro video is let me just do a trial run. I want to just do a topic that I think is pretty easy that's on vectors and Newton's second law. So with motion. So let's put it all together on the first trial video and then I'll go into doing all the subtopics. Let's have a look. What we're going to do is we're going to take a box. Now it could be anything, but I'll just call it a box that's one kilogram. It's going to start from rest and we're going to pull it. We're going to pull it with a force of 10 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees. And there's no friction. So the coefficient of friction is equal to zero. So it's a nice smooth surface. So we keep things real simple. What I want to do is to find the box acceleration and the box weight. Now the first thing what we're going to do in these problems, instead of writing it as F equals MA, I'm going to write it as the sum of all the forces equals MA. But since the box is accelerating horizontally, we're in the X direction. So notice I broke it up into what we call a component. So we have the force in the X direction, and obviously the acceleration is going to be in the X direction. Now, this force is on an angle. So if it's on an angle, what we got to do is we got to determine, are we looking at the horizontal component or the vertical component of this force? All you would do is if you make this into a little triangle, you call this X and this is Y. Notice that the box is moving along the X plane. So if it's along the X plane, we're adjacent to the angle. So we're going to be using cosine. And that's something that is very important. I know a lot of students remember cosine is usually X, sine is Y. Don't use that. Make sure you understand if it's the adjacent side, that's why we're using cosine. We're in the X direction, so it's adjacent to the angle. So the force, the only force here, since there's a smooth surface, there's no friction opposing the motion, we have 10 cosine 30, that's the only force, the mass is 1 kilogram, and we plugged in, cosine of 30 is 0.87, roughly times 10 is 8.7, notice the units of acceleration is meters per second squared. The weight of the object is pretty easy, the weight equals mass times gravity, for the old exam, I would recommend you use 10. Here I use 9.8, the numbers are so easy. So plugging in 9.8 times 1 gives you the weight of 9.8 newtons. Part B, I want to find the final velocity if it's in motion for 4 seconds. Well, I'm going to use the acceleration formula. The acceleration, which we already found, is the final velocity minus the initial over the time. Well, we already know it accelerates at 8.7 meters per second squared. We now know the final speed. We know the initial started from rest, so that's a zero, and it's four seconds. Cross multiplying gives me about 35 meters per second for the final velocity. And last but not least, the final kinetic energy. Well, kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So that's straightforward, one half of the mass. There's the velocity squared and we cranked it out. It's about 35 squared times a half. It's about 600 joules. I hope this wets your beak a little bit. I'll do more elaborate questions down the road. Um, we'll do fluids and mechanics and optics, and I'll, I'll try to build up an arsenal. But at least this gives you a little idea of the style um, that I have in the Oak Destroyer book. Um, and you can always ask me questions on problems from the Oak Destroyer if you wish in the study group. All right, good day to you. Bye-bye. Hey, Dr. Romano, can you do everything? I try. Bye-bye. Good day to you, sir. Wow.